Hi, my name is Rich Harrington and I'd like to show you some techniques for stylizing a portrait image using some of the newer features that have come out in Photoshop in the last few years. Let's go ahead and get started. I want to begin by making some non-destructive adjustments. So the first thing I'm going to do is right click on the background layer and convert it to a smart object. This will place an original copy inside the layer and will allow me to use filters and other adjustments non-destructively on the image itself. Now, not all filters are available, but many are. For example, let's try filter and we'll go to our artistic and we'll try some of our strokes here. Let's go with a watercolor adjustment. Now that's going to go ahead and bring up the gallery effects window and you'll see lots of different filters applied. Because this is a high resolution image, it's going to take a little bit to load in but we could pan over and take a look at some of the areas there. That's looking interesting. We're getting a bit of a watercolor look. I'm going to increase the intensity of the shadows a little bit, bring up the texture, and click OK to apply that effect. Now, that's done a nice job. It's gone ahead and sort of turned this into a painterly-like image, but it feels just a little strong. So if I double-click here on the blending arrow, I get the ability to bring up the fade and I can actually back it off of it. There it is. We could change its blending mode and its opacity. So I could drop that down into soft light for example and back that off to about 60 percent and you see I'm getting a little bit of texture but it's not going so strong. If we toggle that off and on you see we have sort of a nice intensification of the image and a little bit of warming of some of the details but we haven't completely lost the photorealistic nature. That's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and take a look at another non-destructive adjustment and this is going to be the black and white adjustment layer. Now I'm going to apply that and by default of course it strips out the color. Remember, the key here is to use the On Image tool, which allows you to click on the image and it will adjust those areas as you drag left to right inside the image itself. So if I want to independently increase the contrast of certain areas, such as the skin there, let's brighten that up a little bit, while we bring other areas down a little, such as the hair there, see how we can independently control that tonal region. That's looking pretty good. And this is a nice way to really go after specific areas. I'm going to simplify that background a little bit so it's not so distracting. Tone that down. There we go. And that's looking good. Let's lift the chair up a little bit. And that's looking nice. We've really got a good contrast there. Now, I've gone through all that work to make it a black and white adjustment layer, and I'm just going to bring the color back. Let's pick the Move tool here because this allows you to use a great set of keyboard shortcuts. If you have a layer selected and you choose a tool that does not have its own blending modes, such as the Move tool, you can use the shortcuts Shift Plus to step through your blending modes and go through one at a time. And notice how we're getting different areas coming through here, such as the lighter color or the darker color. And we can step on through and get some very different looks. And this is really subjective, but what I'm going for is sort of a higher contrast look. And I'm just going to keep stepping through until we find something we like, and then we'll go back around the horn one time. And there's some pretty compelling things here. I like the darken mode here, how it's simplifying the background down and really lifting her up. Let's set that at about 80%. And then we'll duplicate that black and white layer again by pressing Command J. And we can use a second copy here and I think I like the multiply mode. Let's go back just a little bit and we'll lower that to about 50 percent and we're getting a nice focus on our subject as well as sort of simplifying some of the more distracting bright colors in the background. That's looking pretty good. What I'd like to do now is bring her skin areas out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect my adjustment layers, select the background layer and choose select color range and this is going to allow us to click and start to make a selection. I recommend the localized option here and this will isolate your selection a little bit more. We'll close localized color and pull the range in a bit and this allows us to as we click 
start to keep that selection a little bit more constrained. That's looking good. We're not going for perfect here because we're just going to work with sort of a tonal range. I'll fuzz that out a little bit, tighten the range up, just finish getting her face. That looks pretty good. If I need to subtract, I can option click on an area to remove it. Shift click to add. That looks pretty good. Let's click OK so we have a selection. And then we could choose a selection tool such as Marquee and click the Refine Edge button, which lets you quickly see what you are selecting. I could choose Smart Radius if I want to automatically detect edges a bit and round that out. And that's going to clean that up. And we can smooth things a bit with the smooth edge there and a little bit of feathering if we want to avoid hard clipping. That's looking pretty good. I got the skin tone selected and that's going to allow me to go to my next effect. So we're going to go ahead there and instead of outputting that to a selection, we're going to choose that to a new layer with a layer mask. And that's going to put that material on a copy of the layer and have it masked out so it's just the skin tones. Now let's move that back up top here above the black and white adjustments, turn the layer on, and you see what we have there is we've brightened up just the skin tone areas by sort of putting a copy of the unprocessed image back on top of all of those black and white effects that we've been playing with. And notice there's not the watercolor effect applied either. So that's looking pretty good. And of course we can play with blending modes here. Things like soft light will add a bit or maybe even hard light to make it pop. But we're just trying to go for a nice lifting of the skin area there. I'm trying to make the highlights in her skin a little more dramatic and you see using that copy there is really adding some high contrast effects to the skin tones and I like that. Now that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and start to round this out. I want to use the HDR toning effect here but we're going to use it very subtly. I also don't want to sacrifice all of my layers. So what we're going to do here is quickly create a new copy of this. Let's go ahead and make a duplicate copy really quick. We're going to go into the window menu here and choose history and you'll see you have the ability to actually create a new document from the current state. There we go. We now have two copies and on this one we're going to take advantage of the HDR toning feature in CS5. Now this is going to flatten this document, that's fine. And what we can do with this here is start to work and play with some of these presets. I'm going to go with a photorealistic high contrast. It's a little strong. Let's go ahead back to a monochromatic. And again, we can play with this with how much detail we want coming through. I'm going to tone down the glow a bit. That's way too strong. But I'm just trying to get a nice contrast for the edges to really pick those up and uh, we could play with how much glow we have. We don't want to go too strong here. We're just looking for some edges. It's looking pretty good. And turn the detail down just a little bit. That looks good. Play with our highlights and our shadows. I like that. And we can always go ahead and twirl down here and play with the curve until we get the sort of contrast we want. When satisfied, I'll click OK and I'm just going to use this black and white layer as a further tone map over in the color image. So once we have that, let's select all and choose copy and we'll come back over to our layered file, make a new layer and we'll paste it in. Now, I haven't saved yet and I'm breaking my own rules, so let's just go ahead and save this file and capture it. There we go. And with this black and white copy here, we'll just name this tone map and then we'll start to blend it back down. There we go. Same shortcut. Move tool selected, shift plus. And we're just going to cycle through the blending modes. Color burn's looking pretty nice there, as was multiply. Let's just keep stepping through, see if anything else jumps out. With blending modes, they're often surprising. Overlay is actually looking pretty nice. Let's back that off to about 40%. Toggle the visibility off and on. I really like that. Notice how the details in the wall and the door are sort of lifted. The color's been lost, but we're getting a nice contrast in the textures there coming through. That's looking pretty good. 
I want to go ahead and finish this off with just a little bit more work. We're going to take advantage of a not often used adjustment layer, and that is the gradient map. So we'll come down here to gradient map, and it's going to load up, and typically it's going to choose a pretty awful preset. I'm going to go ahead and come down here to the metals category, and we're going to load in one of these, and it's okay. We can also come into other categories here, uh, such as simple or noise, and these allow us to load up some colors. That's looking pretty good there. Let's just reverse that, and we have a simple duotone type look. I'm going to click on that and add a few additional colors. We'll warm this up a little bit, make it a richer brown, and come on here in the middle and add a little bit of a warmer color, lighten it up a little. And notice how it's nice and interactive. That looks good. Click OK. And the same thing if you didn't expect it. We're going to change its blending mode. Shift plus and start to blend that back. Darken looks nice. Let's keep going. Kind of like multiply there. We're getting a nice aging of the photo. Brown effect. Keep stepping through. See what jumps out at us. And again, this nice thing about shift plus is the ability to experiment. So there's soft light. That's looking pretty good. Let's go back around, shift plus, to the other categories. There's some of our darkening and our multiply. Color burn, linear burn, all looking pretty good. But I think I'm going to go for that soft light look that we saw. That seemed to work pretty well. Back that off to about 60%. Toggle that off and on. I like how that's looking. It's just a little too much in the skin tones. So let's go ahead down here. We'll command click on the skin tones we isolated before. So we have a selection. We can come up here and we'll just reverse that selection. Select inverse. And now we can fill that with black. And notice what we've just done is we have isolated. Now there if it's hitting the areas we want, great. I think I'm actually going to reverse that so it's stronger on the door. So we'll just hit Command-I and we invert that. And now the skin tones are not being affected, but the door and the background are. And notice we went from sort of having a bluish, greenish, very dramatic background to really knocking back that background in the texture. I want to go ahead and finish this off with a little bit of vignette. We'll go ahead and add a gradient and we'll choose to use a more default gradient so let's just reset these we'll go to the black and white and I'll go radial reverse that and you see we sort of have our interactive controls on the gradient now we could adjust the angle and the scale we can also position it and when I'm satisfied drop that down to multiply mode and that area shows through. Remember, this is fully interactive, so you can move this gradient around, create your hotspot, adjust your scale if it's too strong. Most shadows should drop back down to the 50% range or so. That looks pretty good there. So, there you have it. Let's go ahead and save that document. And I'm going to make a new document from the current state. Back that down. We'll come up here and choose to see our two side by side. And we can see the two states. Let's just click on that and hit Command-0 to zoom it to fit. And now we see sort of our before and after with a bunch of non-destructive adjustments. Everything is all layers. And we can easily turn things off and get back to our original image to tweak it and get where we want. So, my name's Rich Harrington. Hope you enjoyed this look at non-destructive toning inside of Photoshop. There's a lot more you can do. And I invite you to check out the book, Understanding Adobe Photoshop CS5.